Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today we've got two projects we need to get done with the excavator. Let me show you what they are. So if you guys remember last fall, I rented a Bobcat E85 before we actually purchased this Hyundai 60CR-9A. And at the time I used it to clean up this wood line, coming in here, tearing out all of the, you know, invasive species, thorn bushes, autumn olive rose, all that stuff, low hanging branches, because when I brush hog this, I was starting to not be able to get close to the wood line because the branches were coming out and hitting the uh, tractors. I was trying to get close to the wood line. So when I pulled all those out, I didn't have a plan of buying a mini excavator. I knew I wanted one at some point in the future, but I honestly thought it was gonna be three to five years down the road. So as I was pulling all this brush out, I left it in small piles all the way along the way up. That way I could manhandle it with the tractor because if I would take all this and throw it in one heaping pile, my tractor isn't gonna touch it. It's just gonna be one big twisted knot and the compact tractor just doesn't have enough power to pull all of that stuff back out. So I wanted to let it dry out over the winter. I think it's good and dry now. We're gonna go ahead and get this all piled up and get a brush fire going. And then let me show you what the second project is. The second project on the list for today is we need to add a ton of fill on this side of the driveway over here. When we originally did site prep, we had enough fill to kind of give us that bend going into the garage door right there. But you can imagine in the wintertime, if you're trying to back out and you go over that edge and down over the bank, that's not gonna be a good day. So we need to bring in a lot of fill to widen this out so you can have a straight shot into the garage. I should probably hire somebody with a dump truck. That way I can just sit in the excavator and dig loads of fill out of our borrow pit down below. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot today with just me running the excavator and then hopping in and out of the truck, running loads with the dump trailer. Who knows, maybe we'll only do three loads and we'll realize it's a giant waste of time. We need a dump truck, but like I said, we're gonna give it a shot.
All right, I think we're gonna let that burn down a little bit. We'll go dig some fill and then we'll come back over here once it burns down and we'll stoke it back up, keep it burning good for the rest of the day. All right, so we're getting ready to switch buckets here. And I thought since I talk about this hydraulic quick coupler so much, I'd show you how to use it real quick. So it's super easy. All you have to do is this little red switch down here, flip that, it'll start beeping at you. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's two little red tines that hold that pin on. And as you curl in all the way, it's actually gonna use the flow from your cylinder to undo those. See, now they're not connected to that pin anymore. And now when I set this down, it should just come right off. Just like that. Now, it's gonna beep at us until we get our new one on, and since we're digging, we're switching from our 12-inch bucket to our 36-inch digging bucket. Give it a little rock to bounce it in and then flip this switch and then curl out and you'll see those little tines come in and lock that pin in. And now we're ready to dig. I absolutely love that feature. If you've got multiple buckets, I find if you have a pin on bucket, you're probably not gonna use all of your buckets as often as you would if it was as easy as this. So that's why I like it. It lets me use the right bucket for the job because I don't have to worry about being lazy and not wanting to switch buckets. All right, so basically we're gonna do a little exploratory digging here. I had a cherry tree that was growing in the middle of this field I took down last fall because it was pretty scrubby and nasty looking. And uh, when I dug the stump out, you can see I was getting into some pretty good rocky, shaley looking material. So I'm gonna peel the rest of the topsoil off and then start digging. I'm looking for some real rocky, uh, bony material that'll pack together well and we'll make a good base for the driveway up there. So you can see I've got the uh, F-150 and the dump trailer sitting right there. We'll just do a little bit of digging, haul a couple loads, see if it's uh, if we're making any headway or if it's taking forever. Maybe I'll just wait until another day. I can get somebody here to run a dump truck. We can get more per trip. So let's see how this goes.
right, so this is an F-150. It is a half ton. We are probably pushing the limits or exceeding the limits of an F-150. Probably need a three quarter ton or a one ton, but we're making do with what we have, putting it in four low and just creeping up this uh, firewood road that we put in here last summer and just taking it nice and easy. I'm putting about eight scoops with that 30 inch digging bucket on the excavator in here. And uh, that's probably about all the more I, I can handle with this truck and dump trailer. But it is handling it just fine. A guy after my own heart, he still uses his backup mirrors instead of the stupid backup camera. You know why I don't use... I, ha I actually have a trailer backup assist in here. But I just, I've learned to do it with the mirrors. And to me, I think it's easier that way. To use this, you have to program your trailer. You have to put in the height or the the width and the length of your dump trailer and all that and that's just too much screwing around when you know how to back up a trailer. Trick I learned, put your hand on the bottom of the steering wheel and turn it the way that you want to go. So instead of having it on the top, because you got to go the opposite direction you want to turn, put it on the bottom and turn it left or right.
Well, there we go. We got some dirt moved up here, probably about seven or eight loads in the dump trailer. I'm figuring if a triaxle can haul 20 tons of fill, my dump trailer can haul about four tons worth of fill. Each one of my dump trailers is about a fifth of a full triaxle. So five dump trailer loads equals a full triaxle. Would it be a lot quicker just to buy fill? Absolutely, but this is free and not costing me anything. And I think from here on out, it's actually gonna be a lot easier because we got a little terrace started there where we've got it leveled out. So instead of dumping up here, pushing over the side and then rolling it in, uh, I'll be able to just bring the dump trailer right in here, dump it in the back and work my way back out. So anyway, that's a pretty good start, I'd say. Anyways, that's going to about wrap this one up. If you enjoyed this one, give us a big thumbs up. If you've got any helpful tips or suggestions on how we could do this any faster, leave them in the comments down below. Click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.